I want to call this December rules meeting to order. Uh, Melvina, would you please give the invocation? Erode Galande Hay, Ijala Lichi Sandes Gatino, Nimna de Tadosta, Heldido Hest, Oswati, Lohe, Ajalegis Gadu, Nolahina Jadeti, or Gant has used the Gaha, has your go have says Nihi, Iskinella, Ogadante. Father, we thank you for this day. We just thank you for all your blessings. Lord, during this holiday season, Lord, that we not forget the true meaning, the gift that you gave us, the death, the birth, the death, the resurrection, Lord. That is the greatest gift from you, and let us not forget. Father, be with us throughout this day, and be with each and every one that's here. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Gail, would you do roll call, please? Mike Shambaugh. Here. Joe Deer. Aye. Keith Austin. Here. Danny Callison. Here. Julia Coates. Here. Sean Crinton. Here. Mike Dobbins. Here. Rex Jordan. Here. Johnny Kidwell. Here. Darrell Legg. Here. Wes Snowfire. Here. Dora Patskowski. Here. Joshua Sam. Here. Malvina Shoppouch. E.O. Smith. Here. Candessa Teehee. Victoria Vasquez. You have a corn. Okay, if you've had a chance to look at the minutes, could I have a motion, please? I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed. Motion carries. Okay, uh, from our reports from the Marshal Service, Shannon Buell. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, before my report, I want to apologize for not being here last month. My father was hospitalized. <laughs> And then he passed, so I, I want to apologize for not being at rules last uh, last month. And quite frankly, I forgot about it because I was at the hospital and didn't even have somebody here for you. But I do apologize for that. So if you have any questions about last month, I'm here to answer that. Uh, on this month, besides the report, uh, we've added a couple of things to the monthly report. One is uh, emergency management. So we've added the, the, the reports that they do. Uh, EMS, uh, run calls for EMS, uh, emergency communications, uh, transports, uh, you'll see that on the list here. What that is is where marshals go out and transport inmates from one facility to the other. Uh, adult probation services, so we've added that to the report. Uh, Department of Juvenile Justice Services, so those are some of the add-ons to the report that you'll see in your monthly reports. If anyone has a, a question after this, please give me a call, everybody has my number. If you have specific questions on any of those added reports, but I figured since they're under uh, the Department of the Marshal that you need to know what's going on in your tribe, so that's why I have them there. Without that, is there any other questions for me? Does so anybody have any questions for Marshal Buell? Councilman Callison. Marshal Buell, I don't actually have a question, but I want to thank you for always keeping me informed with everything in my district. When I do call, uh, I do appreciate that. Uh, that way kind of helps me when I do get phone calls I can head them off at the pass you know and I have an understanding of what's going on so thank you very much sir I appreciate it thank you Daryl uh, Shannon do we have a, a account of how many people are at the uh, president of uh, Texas yet I don't have one today but I can get it to you I'm, and email that to all the, okay. the council okay. I want to say uh, without just guessing around 68 okay but I'll get you the hard number today and get it emailed to everybody you bet, you bet. Does anybody have any more questions for Marshal Buell? Sean? Uh, Marshal, would you uh, talk to your staff on the emergency management? They, they figured out a way to, to get us a lot of water over the past okay. all month or so. They, they figured it out, and some situations were, were uh, on not handy times, but they, they got it done. So thank okay. you. Good. Well, thank Tell you, Thank Sean. you. And, Anybody else? Well, Marshall, it's about time you got some more responsibility. I, I look forward to getting your reports. It's not like you didn't have enough already. That's right. All right. Thank you for your report, sir. Right. Thank you. All right. From the Office of the Attorney General, Sarah Hill, we got Chrissy Nemo. Hey, hey Chrissy. Good morning. Uh, morning. Sarah's in Tulsa this morning meeting with the um, United States Deputy Attorney General regarding criminal justice and ending country issues. So um, I do not have a report. I uh, unexpectedly got called to fill in this morning, but I am here to take any, I, I do have one. We, uh, 
we've been approved. Uh, we are in the process of hiring two more attorneys uh, for the AG's office. We're we're still not full, but we're getting uh, we're getting closer. And uh, we did have jury trials last week, so that was interesting. But if anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer them or take them back to AG and get you answers. Does anybody have any questions for Chrissy? Wes. Hey, Chrissy, glad you joined us today. I um, had a question on our election code changes that were changed this year. Uh, did we, ha has the uh, BII signed off on those election all yes, changes? Yes, it's been approved. Okay, because yep. I went by the election commission and asked about it. They said they hadn't received that yet, so I was just making sure. So for anyone who, who doesn't know, because of the Principal Chiefs Act, if we make our election code in years that have chiefs elections. We don't have to do it in the off years, but there's a federal law that says when you're electing principal chief of one of the five tribes that your um, election code has to be approved. So if there are changes in between the time, that has to be submitted and be approved, and it was approved. All right, perfect. And then also, um, I never seen an opinion. I know there was much, much to be discussed on the independent expenditures being uh, not being included and being actually a violation of the election. Um, that was one of the changes before the BIA signed off on it. I didn't see if the Attorney General had an opinion out there on how that doesn't violate the Constitution abridging the Freedom of Speech Clause in Section 4. There is not. Uh, the AG's office hasn't waved, weighed in on that. There was um, some of that was brought up in a previous election in, in a case in front of our Supreme Court. So there is some language um, in the briefing and the opinions on, um, I believe, on disqualification regarding outside expenditures that our court has opined on. So I, I you know, I think that um, the AG's opinions are law unless and until, you know, ruled upon by a court, and I think we have some court guidance on that, and I can, I can share which case that is and the, the arguments that were made there um, with, with you all. Yeah, I, I do remember that court case, and I do remember one of the arguments was that since it wasn't written on his campaign financials, and it was considered a outside expenditure that wasn't written down on, fi on his financials. However, uh, this new election law says that it would be a violation for anyone to be involved, uh, whether that was the can candidate or not a candidate. If it's someone that's not the candidate, it would be a violation of their freedom of speech, and that was something that wasn't addressed in the courtroom. So since that's addressed in this law, it would be pertinent of the Attorney General to make an opinion of how that side, because we see on the courtroom that had happened in the previous um, uh, case where it was uh, obviously a, a breaking of the election law by not writing down those expenditures, so it wasn't a violation under the inex independent expenditure part, but this law definitely specifically outlines that and it also removes the candidate from it where it can be a violation on a citizen who isn't a candidate, which that would be the abridging of the freedom of speech that I would like to have addressed. That's the proper cause of our constitution of how it's been written to protect that right. So I, I think the answer is if you're asking for an AG opinion, if we get a request for an opinion, that we will um, issue an opinion in response to that. I will say briefly that the issue here is the Citizens United, right? The United States Supreme Court has said spending money in election is speech, but that opinion does not apply to the tribe, and our courts have not, well, they have somewhat, because they said it's not a violation when a, if a candidate is prohibited from doing that, but the question is spending political dollars speech under the Cherokee Constitution, um, and that issue has not been directly addressed. So then we need an Attorney General's opinion on that, so that way we could address that and alleviate that problem in question, because I guess, do we not have to follow the Supreme Court laws of the United States? The United States Constitution does not specifically apply to tribes as to the Bill of Rights. That's why we have the um, Indian Civil Rights Act that makes some of the Bill of Rights applicable to tribes when it comes to uh, criminal defendants. Right. But the general protections in the Constitution on what the state cannot do applies to the 50 states and to the United States government. It does not apply specifically as to tribal governments and their restrictions or abilities in passing laws. <clears throat> and that was my concern as being an American Indian. I thought I was an American having the full Bill of Rights afforded to me. And it seems that we have some questions here because the Indian Civil Rights Act doesn't afford all the Bill of Rights to the citizen. Even though there was an Indian Citizenship Right uh, Act passed in 1924, 
It also had to do with if I was a full service military that I would have all those benefits provided to me as being a full fledged American. But there are some questions here on some failed federal Indian policies that could be utilized to violate our rights. Because we have the federal government saying that it's a violation of an American right. The Cherokee saying it, we can, though they may say we're vi that, that Americans getting their rights violated, we say that we can still do that. Well, but they're not, you're not getting your rights. Your, your rights under the, like the freedom of speech. I mean, this is a, private companies can't violate your freedom of speech rights. There, there are two entities that can violate your freedom of speech rights. The federal government under the, under the United States Constitution, the federal government and the state government. We also have freedom of speech rights under the Cherokee Nation Constitution. So the Cherokee Nation government is prohibited from violating freedom of speech. But just because the United States Supreme Court has said unregulated donations to political candidates are speech under the U.S. Constitution, it doesn't mean that they are speech under the Cherokee Nation Constitution. So it sounds like we need to regulate them instead of make them a violation. A violation wouldn't be regulation. The violation would be a complete violation of your First Amendment right, where we can regulate part of that, which is what the United States did and was allowing to have happen. And so, anyways, I appreciate your commentary on this. It's an important thing that I've always been advocating uh, um, how you know, well, this tribe can take millions of dollars out and put them in independent expenditures in elections, but yet it can't happen. It's kind of like, I'll fight you, but you can't hit back. So there is a protection of congruency of being an American, I, being an Indian. I disagree and that's where with I think that how you're, but this body that. is who outlawed independent expenditures. I know that. And Presumably I've, constitutionally. Right, and I voted against it. I was just asking for Attorney General, but, but, but I appreciate the commentary. Uh, look forward to for that request hopefully being fulfilled. So appreciate it. Appreciate it, Speaker. Yep. Councilman Kidwell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ma'am, thank you for being here today. And I, and I really appreciate your, uh, as, as uh, 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 my colleague here has said, uh, appreciate your commentary on this. I think it's important that we also understand that the changes to the election code that we had does not, does not take away anybody's right to do anything. All we're saying is that you need to we, you need to be transparent in how that money is utilized, and uh, and having and going off in two different uh, two different mechanisms by which uh, laws and regulations to, to to be under. As a military person, when a military person drives onto a military base, they are subject to a different set of codes and laws than what they would be uh, otherwise. Just like a Cherokee Nation citizen can be subject to a different set of laws as a Cherokee citizen as they might be as an American citizen. So uh, there's no there's no uh, there's no difference there in that uh, in that we can we can make those uh, we can we can easily make uh, uh, make that uh, uh, those go back and forth. Uh, Military is the same way. And the and it would be nice. I agree to to get some type of if the attorney general wants to weigh in on uh, weigh in that, on that election code, that would be great. If the BIA has already approved that, then that pretty much tells us where we sit. And uh, just like we talked about in the uh, uh, when we went over the election code, and we passed that. If uh, if the BIA or the U.S. Supreme Court or the Cherokee Nation Supreme Court has any issues with with what we passed and, and how we would like things to be calculated and be transparent then I'll be the first one to sit back here at the table and, and, and make the changes that need to be made. But as it sets today, uh, I just want it to be said uh, that uh, we, we're not preventing anyone from supporting anything and expressing their freedom, their freedom to speech. We just want the funds associated with that to be calculated and be transparent and be open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, sir. Councilman Deer. Hey, Nima, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I was just going off, he was talking about Bill of Rights. It's my understanding since the Marshall Trilogy started all that stuff way back when we're considered pre-constitutional that's why the bill of rights there's only certain parts of them that we go by is that correct that's right we didn't the, the states had to ratify it so they right. they got a say in whether or not the um both the original constitution and the amendments to it uh via the bill of rights were applicable to them the tribes weren't part of that government and there's right. a united states supreme court case um that says the uh, individual protections in the United States Constitution do not operate to prohibit tribes from doing anything, which is then why we got the Indian Civil Rights Act that said if you're going to um, prosecute people criminally and you're going to arrest them and you're going to hold them in jail, there are some things that you have to do. Um, you have to not set unreasonable bail for them. You have to have a trial for them. You have to give them court-appointed counsel if they can't approve it. But that Indian Civil Rights Act is all tied to uh, criminal prosecution. And if someone criminally violated 
um, the election code, they would be protected by, and quite frankly, our, our Constitution and our code is more protective than the Indian Civil Rights Act. Um, in expanding our criminal jurisdiction under VAWA and being able to do the longer sentences, we had to have even more protections that we have to have um, jury trials of at least six people. We have to have judges that are law trained. We have to have court appointed attorneys. We have to have our laws publicly available. And we've done all of those things, but we don't do it because the United States Constitution says this is what a tribe has to do when dealing with individual people. We do it first under our own Constitution, second under the Indian Civil Rights Act. But it is clear that tribal action against an individual is not a violation of the United States Constitution. Cannot be. It can be a statutory violation. It can be a tribe's constitutional violations. But all of due process, equal protection, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, all of those things contained in the United States Constitution do not prohibit tribes from taking action. Now, there are clearly other laws that do and say there are certain things that tribes can't do, but it's not because the U.S. Constitution says that tribes are confined in that area because only the United States and the states, that's, again, I mean, it's, it's a little flip to say it, but that's why you can't say that a private individual or a private company can violate your freedom of speech rights because you don't have any freedom of speech rights against someone that's not a state or the federal government. Right. That's a, that's a clarification I wanted because you're talking about Native American. The Native part was all before pre-Constitution that clarified and ratified that after it was done by the states. So that's what I wanted to just verify. And to that's, be clear, as an Indian, I'm still protected from the state of Oklahoma or the United States taking some action against me to violate my rights. If it's one of those two governments doing it, I can still claim constitutional protections right. under the United States Constitution. So I am part of a trust protected as an Indian. Yep. Okay. That's all I had. Thank you for your time. Thank Anybody you. else? Chrissy, appreciate uh, your time and your explanation. Thank you. All right. From FOIA and GRA, GRA we have Gwen Terpin. Good morning. Good morning. We have 30 FOIA requests at this time. Six of those are outstanding. There are no GRA requests. And everything's been updated on the website, and all of you should have a copy of my report. Does anybody have any questions for Gwen? All right, Gwen, you got off easy. <laughs> Thank you. You have a good Christmas. From the Tax Commission, Sharon Swepson. Good morning. Good morning. I believe you have my report. I'll try to answer any questions that you might have. All right, we have any questions? Sean, you're up. Um, Sharon, I haven't received one call from the tag office. I guess things are smooth sailing. <laughs> well, yes. Well. <laughs> uh, we have not had any issues. It's been a little slow, but it's picking up. I, I've been looking at the data and stuff, so it is picking up. So it's more, of, I think, getting the word out to make sure people know that we're there and we're open. Yeah. But it has been going really well. So. Yeah. Hope I don't jinx myself there. So <laughs> appreciate you, mm -hmm. Councilman Deer. Hey, Sharon. Uh -huh. Hey, I've had some constituents ask. I mean, because we hear it and we see the reports, um, and it's not just you, but sometimes we get the reports in there. Like you have my report, and there's no questions. Right. Um, so people had asked if you could just give two highlights, because okay. what they see online is nothing. You see my report, you're out of here. They're like, what happened? Okay. So if you could just give a highlight, even if you give one highlight to let okay. the people actually watching. Oh, okay. Because it's a different, you know, if you say, hey, that's my report, we get it. Uh -huh. But the people on there looking at the TV are like. Right, because they, they don't see the written report that you have. Right. So, so if we could start, and I'll probably ask that for everybody who does that. Uh -huh. um, because they, I, that's been brought up about 10 times this week. Oh, okay. So if, we just can. even if you get one highlight that they need to know about, I think that'd be great. We can do that. Thank you, Chair. So. Anybody else? Hey, Sharon, uh, how's the J office coming? Did you hire somebody? Well, we have someone in the works. We'll see. <laughs> okay. I know the one got trained and uh, left, so you, yes. got, you have another one training now? We have another one that is in, I believe, in background checks and stuff. So we, we are working on that. I don't think they've started yet. So are we full staff on all our TAG offices for the most um, part? I think we still have some openings at Catoosa. Um, but we have not filled those yet. We are doing real well right now, and I think we're just going to kind of see how things go and fill them as we need to. 
on that. I mean, I, I want to have plenty of staff, but I don't want to have staff sitting around doing nothing either. So, um, but we are looking at those, but we are pretty full at most all of the places. I know we lack the one at Jay. We did have one at Tahlequah. I believe they started last week. So we are getting there. Oh, good. Okay, uh, Sharon, good report. And you have a Merry Christmas. You too. Thank you. From the Gaming Commission, Commission Janice Purcell, are you here? Good morning. Good morning. I'm here on behalf of Ms. Purcell. Um, I'm Tia Deal. I know that she had sent in her report. Um, this was kind of last minute, so I haven't actually mm -hmm. seen it, but I will try to answer any questions you may have so or relay have, them. <laughs> does anybody have any questions for Tia? Well, they let you off easy. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. You have a good evening. All right. From Human Resources, Samantha Hendricks. Good morning. I'm used to saying good afternoon. Yeah, good morning. So, um, we, I was going to say you have my report if you have any questions, but I think I'm going to add two things with that. <laughs> so um, we're continuing to work on our processes. We have seen a, from the time of offer to the time the person actually starts, we've seen a dramatic decrease as far as the time to fill. Uh, we've also seen um, our, our orientation increase quite a bit. I mean, we're working very diligently to, to get people on. In addition to that, we've also seen our terms go down, so we're working on retention at the same time, so with training and things of that nature. So um, that's not a whole lot of stats. I was thinking about two things that I needed to say when I got up here. <laughs> so, But those are some of the major things that are happening. We're continuing to work on communications, to your point, Speaker, that from the last couple of meetings, we're continuing to work on those uh, communications back to the applicants to make sure that they know where they are. We're um, not just from our internal piece as far as our database where we send out emails, but also increasing telephone calls to make sure that they're in the know. We're still not there yet. I'll be honest, we're still not completely there yet, but we are definitely making a strong effort that direction. Does anybody have any question for Samantha? Keith? Uh, okay. You know, in the vein of what Councillor Deard said uh, previously about the two things, <laughs> there's one thing that, that we talk about, you talk about, and I love to hear it, the fact that the time is getting shorter. It is, yes. Uh, I don't really see that re in information in the report uh, just because it's not presented that way. I, I'd love to see it, the average number of days. Oh, of I'd love to thing. share that. Absolutely. We can add that. <laughs> it would actually show us <clears throat> what, how long it's taking. Right. Uh, and... Um, because that's a real good measure of uh, how long it's taking from the time the job is posted. And then, we, uh, we, measure, we measure that pretty much on an everyday basis. I okay. mean, we look at it in a holistic point of view from a, on a monthly basis. But we, um, we like to see that because we know whether we're making progress on the changes we're making, especially when it comes to applicants and getting them hired quickly. Well, that's been one of the things in the eight years that I've been uh, sitting here. I've seen uh, that it, that's been a constant challenge. And to see us making uh, headway on that is, is truly gratifying so thank you great thank you anybody else well I think that is a, a good point that our condition all along is we were losing people you know because they never heard anything and they had to get a job and or even take for example our marshal service and I'll say that since McGirt we are we have been slammed and if we have candidates for those or for those positions we really need to kind of have a priority to get more officers or marshals on the street because you know our responsibilities have uh, gosh tripled so um, I appreciate your effort and uh, if you would include that how long it's taken that that would be a, a good thing for us and as Councilman Austin said we, we'd love to see it I sure will all right thank you ma'am thank you all right that brings us to old business numb pending New business. Uh, EO, you want to take that one, number one? Yes, this is a, <clears throat> a resolution confirming the nomination of Laura Dishman for the Cherokee Nation Business Board of Directors. i put that in form of a motion. I have a motion and a second. Okay, um, Laura, would Ms. Dishman, would you come on up and uh, tell us about yourself? Okay, well, thank you, Speaker and Council members, for having me here today. I have spoken with the majority of you over the last few days, and I very much enjoyed those conversations. So my name is Laura Dishman, and I am from Jay. I was born and raised in Jay, and my family goes back five generations in the Jay community. I've known uh, Speaker and Councilor Shot Pouch for the majority of my life. 
I have a home in Bixby because my husband works in Tulsa, but I spend the majority of my time in Jay and Delaware County where I work in our family abstract and title company. My um, parents purchased that company back in 1968, so it's been in my family a very long time. My father uh, worked in the company along with us until he passed away in 2008. And since that time, my mother and I have continued to operate the company together. My mother happens to be here with me today, and I'm very proud to have her here. Uh, we have three offices that span across districts 9 and 10. Um, so I spend a lot of time traveling between those offices. We have a fourth office in Ottawa County as well. We are very proud of our Cherokee heritage, and we employ several Cherokee citizens. And our company has been Taro certified for over 15 years. And we are passionate givers in our community. We love our community, and we work hard in our community. And we have also seen the benefits and the impact of what Cherokee Nation has done in our community. We have uh, two casinos that provide an abundance of jobs. We've got the Sam Hyder Clinic, which is a wonderful he health care resource for the citizens. Turkey Nation has greatly improved the infrastructure in and around our area, and we're even getting a new housing project that we're very excited about. So the contributions that Cherokee Nation has made in our community have um, definitely made an impact, and you know our community is strong and vital because of that. Okay, does anybody have any questions for Mrs. Dishman? Wes? Hey, Ms. Dishman, uh, sorry I wasn't able to get back to you on the phone the other day. I know you'd called. Appreciate the call and heads up. Um, just kind of what uh, I know a little bit about you, read about your um, bio. Uh, what is your intentions on to bring to Cherokee Nation businesses of a board member? Like, what's your direction? What do you see? Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about fitting those roles? Uh, a little bit about our 8A contracts and, and your knowledge maybe about how that might uh, yeah. be something that you could speak on. Well, first of all, I have a passion for business, and you know, if I if this works out, I'm very privileged and honored to be able to serve on the board. Um, first of all, I just you know my business experience. I've been running the company with my mother and and my father until he passed away for the last 30 years. Um, we have um, learned what it takes to keep a company going and successfully keep it going. We have um, the real estate market is very cyclical, so there are a lot of economic downturns. We've been through a couple of recessions and now even a pandemic. So I think you know the experience I've gained from, from that and from being in the real estate world, uh, as well as my passion for our community and community involvement, um, I hope that I can add value to the board. Um, you know What I know about the 8A contracts is that it allows, it's, it's a certification or designation given to disadvantaged entities that allows you to contract with some of these agencies. Um, I believe you can avoid some of the um, bidding process that way and maybe even secure some sole source contracts. So, but I will tell you I'm looking forward to learning more about that. Okay, appreciate that. I just didn't kind of heard a little bit more about your experience on the company. And that's kind of where you're engaging, uh, being serving on the board, is that your experience on running a, a business. Uh, so, all right, appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Speaker. Yes, sir. Anybody else? Well, I'd just like to add that, you know, I am a sponsor uh, for Mrs. Dishman. I've, I've known the family a long time. They've been in uh, the Jay and the Grove area. They've ran uh, numerous businesses, been very successful. But the one thing that makes them stand out to me a lot is their involvement in the community. Uh, when there's things that need fundraisers and things that are to be money to be raised for different things, they're always there. You know, our, our child advocacy center uh, they're very big in supporting that, which is a very big thing in Delaware County because it really gives a lot of different agencies a place to go uh, to try to protect our children. So they have been very big in things like that. Um, that's why I'm proud to sponsor you today. And um, is there anybody else? Mr. Kidwell. Mr. Speaker, I just want to be added as a sponsor thing. Okay. Rex, too. Melvina. I just want to add to what Mike said, and I, I think I've worked around them since in the 70s, but I was on the opposite side, but they've been successful, and uh, but uh, like Mike said, they're great contributors in our community and sees the needs and all the way around, and, I, and I'm glad you know, 
to see Laura here, or you know, to see somebody in the community that we could reach out to if there is, you know, a need. So, Laura, thank you for thank considering. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. Okay. We have, uh, is there any further discussion? All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? All right. Motion carries. Uh, congratulations. All right, next, number two. Joe Deere, will you want to take that one? Sure. This is a resolution confirming the nomination of Bill Hickman for the Cherokee Nation Business Board of Directors. I put that in the form of a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, Mr. Hickman, you want to come on up? Yes, sir. Good, good morning, sir. Tell us about yourself. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to all of you for serving on the Cherokee Nation Council. I had the privilege of being elected to the Norman City Council for a couple of terms, and so a little bit I understand the challenges that you face as council members, but the rewards that come with serving in the chairs that you sit in. So I want to say thank you for your service to our nation. Um, my name is Bill Hickman. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I grew up in Tulsa with my wife. Uh, we've been married for 31 years now. Um, I had the privilege of being admitted to the United States Air Force Academy and graduated from the Air Force Academy and served as an officer in the Air Force. During my service, my area of uh, practice and specialty was government, federal, federal government contracting work, and in particular in the command, control, communication, and computer uh, era in the early 90s, which was a very exciting time. While I was in the Air Force, I attended Auburn University and have an MBA from Auburn University. And my wife and I decided that uh, continuing on in the Air Force uh, was a challenge uh, to a family that we wanted to go a different direction. So we settled down in the Norman, Oklahoma area, where we live currently and raised our children. And I attended the University of Oklahoma uh, College of Law. I was blessed and had the ability to finish number, number one in my class from the University of Oklahoma. And I've been in private practice for nearly 20 years. In private practice, I mostly consider myself a business attorney. Um, I represent large and small businesses doing uh, mergers and transactional type work, as well as uh, litigation, and I represent some education institutions and nonprofits. And so I am honored and humbled to have the opportunity to be nominated and be before you and to bring that skill set of a veteran perspective and at large perspective, um, and a private practicing attorney doing a transactional work perspective, as well as my federal government contracting experience to the board to try to bring value added to the Cherokee Nation business to help ensure a strong dividend is given back to you to serve and improve the betterment of the lives of the people of our nation and to preserve our culture and, uh, and the, our independence and sovereignty. All right, very well. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Hickman? Keith? Well, I, I have genuinely appreciated both uh, Ms. Dishman and Mr. Hickman's uh, approach to this. Both of them have really given us the information we needed in advance. Both of them have made themselves very available to us. They, they were very proactive. They reached out to all of us. Uh, they really set the tone of what we should get every time that we, re that, that we have a nominee. And both of them are extraordinary nominees to the, to the board. They bring true value. Uh, I am uh, uh, very impressed with both of these. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you for uh, both of you for for doing the work before you got here. Thank you. It makes our job much easier. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Doc. Yes, uh, Mr. Hickman, are you an active voter in Cherokee elections? Uh, yes, sir. I, I am registered to vote. I have voted in the past, and so have my three children who are also members of the Cherokee Nation. Okay. Now, you live in Norman. Uh, Yes, Do you sir. plan on attending, if confirmed, plan on attending CMB meetings virtually or in person? Uh, I attend to, uh, to attend them in person. I, part of my law practice actually includes clients in Tulsa area. I have family in Tulsa, and I'm in Tulsa regularly, so um, no problem being in there in person in Tulsa. Thank you, Mr. Hickman. Thank you, Chair. Councilman Callison. Oh, okay. You too. Josh, Sam, too, and Daryl. Yes. 
Yeah. Well, you, you can't be twice. <laughs> All right. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Sorry, I was late. Uh, I look forward to meeting you both right after this, and it was great uh, visiting with you. And thank you again for, like Keith said, doing the work beforehand and providing everything that we need to know to make, um, you know, make a good decision. And we welcome you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Well, again, I'm, I'm proud to sponsor you too, sir. Um, you know, we do have two good uh, people to go on our board, both very articulate in what they do. And uh, it is refreshing to see that we have resumes and, and you, you've been open for questions and you've answered them well. So uh, I'm proud to sponsor you both. All right, if there's nothing further, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations to both of you. Okay, are there any announcements? <laughs> Doc? Uh, these two recent additions, are they adding on to the board or are they replacing a couple of individuals on the CMB board? Oh, here comes Terry Lee. She's running. Look. <laughs> And they are new additions to the board. We had two vacant seats. All right. Anything else? Julia? Hi, Tara Lee. Do yes. we have additional vacant seats or do we have a full con We're full at this We're point. We're full now. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. No more questions or announcements. Um, the next meeting is tentatively scheduled for Thursday, January 26th. At 1 p.m., I need one more motion. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned.